So, the anime for a certain scientific accelerator is in full swing, and I think it's safe to say that it's exceeding people's expectations, especially considering the manga is, you know, not, not, not great. And also the fact that, you know, the last anime from this franchise wasn't received too warmly? I think that's fair to say. I'd like to start by saying that I actually do like Index Season 3 and I'm glad that it exists. Does that mean I think it's perfect, or even anywhere near as good as previous seasons were? Y you're joking, right? The biggest problem with this season isn't the content itself, but rather how they chose to adapt it. Which, to put it very bluntly, was poorly. Let me put it this way, Season 1 adapted 6 light novels, Season 2 had 7, and also a little side story, whereas Season 3 did 9. Now we had 2 extra episodes to play with, but that is nowhere near enough for all this content. Everybody knows by now, they just tried to cram way too much into way too few episodes. If the season was 48, or hell even 36 episodes, I doubt the backlash would have been as severe as it was. They didn't do that though, and here we are. Real quick though, before we get into the bad, let's take a minute to give credit where it's due. Yes, that's right, contrary to what the internet will have you believe, this season actually does do some things really well. First off, the backgrounds. I don't know who we've got to thank for them, but that guy deserves a medal. They are by far the best thing in the anime. The variety of the locations make this even more impressive, from Academy City to London and many other places as well. Also, the sound and music is generally good as well, with some real head boppers in the soundtrack. But that's enough nice ease. Let's get to the bad stuff. If you, like me, hadn't read the light novels, you would probably have struggled to follow what the hell was going on at any one time. It's not an impossible task, but they just don't give you enough time to digest what's happening before they move right on to the next thing. It's 100 miles a minute all the time. Can any anime-only viewer, without looking at the wiki or anything, tell me they understood why Last Order got sick towards the end? Because I had to look it up in the light novel, where it's far more clearly explained. It's not just anime only viewers that were disappointed though. People who had read the light novels were also left frustrated at the epic fights and epic moments that they'd read and let their minds run wild with being severely shortened and neutered in the anime. Accelerator vs Kakane didn't feel nearly as big as it should have considering these are two of the most powerful characters on the science side at this point in the story. And honestly, that's one of the better fights this season. There are far worse offenders later on. But if I sat here and listed them all, we would be here even longer than we are already. Speaking of Kakane, that reminds me of another of the season's greatest flaws. The handling of new characters. To be fair, this is something that was bound to happen with a series that has as many recurring characters as this one, but keeping track of all these guys and girls is a full-time job. This season adds a lot of characters to an already large roster, and it gives some existing characters much larger roles. I mean, Tao Girl? What do you mean she's important for a couple arcs? Just kidding, I actually really like it to her. What do you mean Hamazura was in season 2? I don't remember him. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean he's a main character? Index isn't even a main character. Previously established characters are also severely watered down, with Accelerator being maybe the worst example of this. Aside from a bit during World War 3, he comes across as excessively edgy with no real reason for it. In the light novels, his character is explained in far more detail and his growth feels more rewarding and natural, whereas in the anime it sort of comes out of nowhere. I guess the one positive from having so many characters is that when they all do gather in one place like in World War 3, it does make it seem like a much bigger deal with the characters that we recognise and not generic soldier number 10,032. Even if, as a result, Misaka has like no screen time. Let's look at each arc individually. Document of C, 3 episodes. This one could have used maybe one more episode but overall it's one of the better arcs in terms of actually being able to follow it. Battle Royale, 3 episodes. Maybe the biggest letdown of the season. The tactics and interplay between the various factions is really toned down and a lot of the characters don't get much time to shine at all. The one upside to this arc, there is a lot of good fights though. Acre of the Back, 3 episodes. Like the first arc, this is probably one of the best this season, 
It's easy to follow and easy to enjoy. British Royal Family, five episodes. Despite having more episodes than the previous arcs, this arc actually covers two volumes of the light novel, so actually they've had one less episode than they should. This arc ranges from enjoyable enough when you see all the villains from the previous arcs helping out, but then very confusing towards the end with a lot of things that will make you go, wait, what? There's also a lot of stuff cut from the light novel, but you didn't need me to tell you that. Dragon, three episodes. No sugarcoating this one, this arc is completely ruined. This is the hardest arc to follow with important characters and plot devices showing up seemingly out of nowhere. I was able to follow the other arcs just from the anime alone, but this is the one where I had to start looking things up. It doesn't even have any really good fights to hold it up like the Battle Royale arc. It's the worst arc of the season, bar none. And finally, World War 3, nine episodes. This arc is the grand finale of the series, except not, not really. So naturally, it has a lot of big moments, great fights and important character resolutions. Like the other arcs though, the pacing is lightning quick and the perspective constantly shifts between a lot of characters. The biggest loser in this whole arc is Misaka, with most of her stuff happening off screen, which is a shame considering how little she appeared in the rest of the season anyway. However, the actual stuff that's happening I found to be very enjoyable, so if you can look past the breakneck speed the plot is going at, this is the best arc of the season. So how could we have avoided all of this? Well first off, I'm not involved in the anime industry or anything, I don't know the internal workings on how things are organised, I, I don't know how many episodes they were allowed to have, Who's who we have to blame, I don't know. I'm just going to talk about what would have made the season better without worrying about if it's something that would have actually been possible given the circumstances and internal workings. The first and most obvious thing that they could have done is simply had more episodes. Really, this season should have been two separate 24 episode seasons which tells you all you need to know about why this season isn't liked that much. I get that they were probably trying to blitz through the rest of this to get to New Testament, but that doesn't make what we got any better. In my head, Index Season 3 would have covered up to the British Royal Family arc, then we would have got Index Season 4, which would have covered Dragon and World War 3. Alternatively, if they didn't like that idea for whatever reason and want to make things more complicated, they could have split the seasons by protagonist, have 24 episodes dedicated to Toma, and then 24 episodes dedicated to Accelerator and Hamazura. If they did this, it could have made Toma vs Accelerator 2 a more interesting fight because you would have got each of their individual viewpoints in the corresponding seasons. This point isn't as big an issue because it's something that's fairly inconsistent, but some of the animation was just not that good. However, it's not that big a problem because it's something they could fix in Blu-ray releases. I mean, I mean, I haven't looked to see if they actually did fix it, but they, they could have, is what I'm saying. At the end of the day though, they didn't decide to do any of that, so what can we hope for right now? Honestly, I find it very unlikely that we'll get a full-on remake of just this season, like very unlikely. The most we can hope for, I think, is some kind of Index Season 3 director's cut with additional scenes that explain and give more context to everything that's going on. Because really that's the thing that drags the season down, is the lack of context as to why events are happening. Oh, and also actually put Misaka's World War 3 stuff in this time, that would be great. The amount of stuff they'd have to add though, I don't think anyone will put in that much effort for a Blu-ray only director's cut exclusive limited edition thing. It's probably just not worth it. Maybe if it gets crowdfunded, I don't know. With all this said though, I would like to reiterate that I am happy this season was made in the first place. I'm glad that it happened, I'm glad that the stuff they showed got animated. I don't dislike this season nearly as much as most people on the internet, and this season does have some good parts. Hamazura defying the odds, Accelerator's finale, and honestly, most of the World War 3 arc are some of my personal favourite parts of not just this season, but the series as a whole. I'm glad that all this content finally got animated, even if it could have been done better. With that being said, if we ever do get a New Testament anime, they cannot let the same thing happen again. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on you again. I realise now I mentioned World War 3 a lot in this video, and that's probably because it's maybe the best part of Season 3? I think so at least. 
Luckily at the moment, JC staff seem to be mounting a comeback after a few disappointments. So here's hoping for the best for the future. Well, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Let me know how you would fix Index Season 3 in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more to know when they're going to come out and stuff. I don't know how the YouTube works anymore. I also have a review channel and the link will be somewhere where I do reviews, weekly reviews of anime, including a certain scientific accelerator. So if you're interested in that, go and check it out. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I will see you next video. Bye, guys.